Greetings everyone, my name is Steven Lentz, and I wanted to go over a brief explanation of what TWI is and where it came from in this video I like to call A Brief History of TWI. If you are familiar with lean manufacturing and the Toyota production system, then you may have come across terms like job instruction or training within industry, also known as TWI. You may have even experienced TWI to some degree and want to learn more about it. Either way, you may be wondering, what is TWI? Where did it come from? It all starts with a man named Charles Rickardson Allen, an American author, editor, and consultant for the Federal Board of Vocational Education in the early 1900s. Allen would write a series of books on the topics of training and leadership for industrial and vocational applications. His most notable book related to TWI was titled The Instructor, The Man, and The Job, a handbook for instructors of industrial and vocational subjects. In this book, Allen describes a four-step method of preparation, presentation, application, and testing based on the scientific method. Charles R. Allen developed this method during World War I to help improve the shipbuilding process for the war. Not much more is known about Charles R. Allen, however, his works would go on to impact the course of history. Unfortunately, he would not live long enough to see it. Charles R. Allen passed away in July of 1938 at the age of 76. Just over a year after Allen's death, Nazi Germany invaded Poland in September of 1939, causing Britain and France to declare war on Hitler and his Nazi regime. On the other side of the Atlantic Ocean, the United States was just getting over the Great Depression. They were in great need for something to change. The war against the Nazis was an opportunity for the United States to bounce back by becoming the primary supplier of the Allied forces during the war. Germany would later form an alliance with both Japan and Italy. The U.S. needed to be able to quickly expand and keep up with the demand. The U.S. government wanted to develop a program much like the one Charles R. Allen had during World War I. C. R. Dooley from the Sacconi Vacuum Company and Walter Dietz from the Western Electric Company were sent to Washington, D.C. on loan to begin development of the program since both of them had experience in training and development by helping with the shipbuilding project during World War I. TWI focused on the five needs of a supervisor knowledge of work, knowledge of responsibilities, skill in instructing, skill in improving methods, and skill in leading. The TWI service rolled out a series of programs most commonly referred to as the J programs based on Charles R. Allen's work. Job instruction to improve the skill of instructing, job method to improve the skill of improving, and job relations to improve the skill of leading. It would take several months of trial and error for Dooley and Dietz to craft these programs into their simple four-step methods. Dooley and Dietz began with closing the skill gap. Using Charles R. Allen's training method as a base, a test was done on the lens grinding industry to help improve training time. Lens grinding is a complicated process. In the early 1940s, it would take five years to train the average person the art and science of lens grinding. By the end of 1940, that time was reduced to four to six weeks. Job instruction was born. Later, in 1945, the training would again be reduced to less than six weeks. But another crisis would emerge, forcing the United States to really utilize TWI to its full potential. In December of 1941, the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. The United States was now entering World War II. This created a huge dilemma, as many of the U.S. industry's skilled labor was now headed overseas to join the war. In April of 1942, Franklin D. Roosevelt signed an executive order for the War Manpower Commission, who were tasked to carry out the TWI service and fill the void with unskilled labor. The most dominant group of unskilled labor was women, who, at the time, did not typically work in industrial settings or fight in any wars. This gave birth to the cultural icon Rosie the Riveter as a symbol to encourage women to volunteer for wartime service in factories. There were over 600 client companies utilizing TWI. Of these 600 companies, 86 increased their production by at least 25%, 100% reduced their training time by more than 25%, 88% reduced their labor hours by over 25%, 55% reduced scrap by at least 25%, and 100% reduced grievance by more than 25%. Productivity in the United States was at an all-time high, making the U.S. an industrial powerhouse of the world. The TWI programs were instrumental in winning the war because the United States was able to make so much material so quickly. The Axis powers could not understand how the Allied forces could have created so much materials. TWI allowed the United States the ability to build a Liberty ship from start to finish in just over a week. 
By the end of the war, the TWI workers were able to produce one B-24 bomber an hour. In May of 1945, after the Western Allies and Soviet Union invaded Germany and succeeded the capture of Berlin, Germany surrendered unconditionally. In late July of 1945, the TWI offices were notified to cease operation effective September 30th of that year. Just over a week later, Hiroshima was bombed, followed by Nagasaki a week later. Japan announced their surrender. The war was over. The TWI services officially closed their operations on September 28, 1945. Because TWI was viewed as a wartime program, the project was set aside as a skilled labor returned to their jobs after the war. The TWI style of leadership was quite a bit different than what management was used to at the time, and they quickly reverted to their old traditional command and control style of management. TWI in the United States began to dwindle rapidly after the war, and most of the TWI trained workers were disbanded. The United States manufacturing was now the best in the world. There seemed to be little motivation to continue improving when you're the best in the world. Japan, however, did not have the same post-war outlook. Their industrial infrastructure was severely damaged and they needed to start fresh as quickly as possible. The United States wanted to help the Japanese by transforming them into a capitalist society so they would never have to fight them again. Japanese industries like Toyota embraced the TWI methods and ran with them. TWI was the basis for Kaizen, or good change, in the industry. TWI was the launch pad for the Toyota production system. One aspect, however, that hasn't changed much over the years is the use of job instruction. Job instruction is still utilized, much as it originally was, to continue to train employees correctly, safely, and conscientiously. In part, JI gave birth to Kata, which is the discipline of practicing standard work the same way every time. I hope you have all enjoyed this video and now understand what TWI is and where it came from. Please like, share, and subscribe to be alerted to more videos in the future. Be sure to keep an eye out for the next video called A Brief History of TWI Part 2, The Resurgence of TWI in the States. My name is Steven Lentz, and I hope you have fun and rock on.